Hi everyone, Affinity Photo. What a great alternative to Photoshop it is. Over the next few months, I'm putting together a series of guides on my YouTube channel for you. I've got loads planned, so do subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications when fresh uploads go online. Once you've seen one of the videos, if you want to skip this intro, then just check the timestamp down below in the description and you can go straight to the tutorial. Hi everyone, I've got a really unusual tutorial for you today. I'm gonna to try and make it as quick as I can for you, hopefully no more than 10 minutes. Do spend the minutes watching this one, I tell you, everyone is worth it. I'm going to show you a very different way to use the Mystical Lights plugin. I'm gonna do it in a browser. It will make it much quicker and faster for you to actually choose what you want. It means we can bring these in more than one at a time, plus we can also view them much, much larger. And the other thing is they've got an offer on a $14.99 at the moment and they do repeat this offer sometimes through the year. Such a good deal, do look out for that. Go and buy it. I think you'll love them, especially after watching this video. It's such a great deal. So once purchased, you download them to your system. And I put mine here under applications and here you can see all the folders coming out from that under downloads. You can see here I've got some papers and watercolors and some brushes and I actually popped the mystical lights up here and here are all the folders. Once unzipped they come down into all of their individual folders here. Now normally you'd bring these into assets within Affinity Photo but I'm going to stay within my folders and what this means is I can come down to my own browser here I'm going to use Adobe Bridge Hopefully you've seen my video on free browsers and if not go and check that out. Just remember that all cameras usually come with a free browser and it's worth making use of that. And if not download the Photoshop trial and then once finished you can just cancel that and stay with Adobe Bridge that's free. Here we are in Adobe Bridge, applications and go down to the folders and here you can see everything there are the separate folders and now you can see all of the individual thumbnails for all of these lighting effects. We can make them bigger and we can spread this out a bit more so we can see them even larger or in fours and fives, whatever you want really, and so easy to scroll through as well. Now here's the really good thing because once we go through these we can actually select them by starring or color coding and then we can filter them right at the end. But before we do that, let's go over to Affinity and I've got a picture here of Emma from a steampunk day that I put together. And we'll just drag this image over to the left and then we can go back to Bridge and we can see both applications at the same time. Now just scroll through the ones that you think that you want. And I think this is always the hard part of these plugins and you tend to get lost amongst, I mean in this situation, hundreds and hundreds of images. You just need to go through all of these and compare them to the image on the left and get colors that are working for it. And within all of these, we do have a lot of golds and blues and mauves, so they will work very well. I do quite like this one here. And just remember, with a browser, there's no reason why we can't just bring it up full screen using the space bar, and we can then use cursor keys to go through. I'm going to mark this one up as one of my favourites, so that was just Command 8 to bring up a green label on it. Now just scrolling through these, you can see just how easy it is to bring up all of the images and choose the one that you want. Going over to the next folder. And I quite like that one straight away. Yeah, we'll mark that up. Just continuing to scroll through. And um, that one as well, I think. Uh, works quite well because we've got a patch there where her head can go. So do look at those areas. Command 8 again. Now what I'll do is I'll continue through these and I'll mark a few up and save you going through all of this with me and then we'll skip to the end and how I filter this all through. Now when I imported them originally, I applied mystical lights as the keyword to them. The easy way to do this is just select all of the images in the folder, so Command or Control A, and then you go down and add keywords in your browser, and type in the keyword that you want to assign to it all. So here we've got mystical lights. 
Do this to all of the images in all those folders. Now this is where it gets really good and we go back to our top folder and it doesn't have to be that folder, we could use any folder so we can come up here to say Lightroom and then go up to the search bar and type in Mystical Lights and then everything with that keyword will come up so we will have all 500 odd images just coming up as they've been keyworded. You will get one or two other folders coming up as well because they will say the same thing as in Mystical Lights. Now we can start filtering, so if we hit the green for Approved and all the ones I've selected have come up here. Now we can just drag them over on top of our image and they will get dropped into the Layers palette all ready to go. How good is that? Let's turn all of these off apart from the first one. Let's go over to the Move tool, which is V on the keyboard. And we can stretch this out all over the image. Once that's done, we'll go over to the Blending mode. It's currently set to Normal, but we can change that to either Screen or Add works best, and I prefer Screen. And straight away, we can see what we can do with it. Now if you're worried about using a mask, this is a great way to get into these. So come down to masks on the panel here. Click once and that will put a mask in here. We'll go over to a brush which is B on the keyboard. Make sure we have black selected in the colour. We can go and check our opacity, flow and hardness up here. So we want zero hardness, 100% flow and opacity around about 60, but we can use the keyboard as a shortcut for these. So one to zero will actually change those. So two is 20%, six, 60%. Come back down and just take out those areas over the face there. I'm working very quickly just so I can keep this short for you all. So there's the first one done. Let's go to optical four and V on the keyboard. Just move that and then pull that out again. Change over to the blending mode for screen. And well, I really like that as it is actually. Maybe we could take away a little bit of this just to show you. So we'll put a mask in. Again, be on the keyboard for a brush. Make sure we're on black and just feather that back out. That still looks really good just like that as well. So. Your choice on that one, I think. Let's go down to the next one. This time, let's do this the other way around. So let's change the blending mode first. Go down to screen. And if we need to pull it out, we can see now and maybe even leave it as it is. V on the keyboard again, move it around. Just get a little bit of a twist there. So you don't have to pull these out all the time. B for brush. And actually, I don't think we really need to do much in the way of using the mask there at all. So on to the next one. This works really well with her colors here. So also she's got this mystical feel with this hood, so I think this particular light works well as well. So pulling that out, giving it a bit of a twist, don't forget we can flip them and turn them round. So just work around that face area there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, but we'll put a mask on there I think and we'll just brush that away around the face again. And don't forget we can take these down with the opacity as well if it's a bit too strong. On to the last one, and we'll change the blending mode again first of all, so screen. 
V on the keyboard and we can move that up into the corner and then stretch out from this opposite side. I don't think we need this on the left hand side so we'll be using a brush to take that out with a mask. Just getting that a bit bigger on the right hand side. Mask goes in, B for brush and we're just going to paint that all the way out on 100% back down to 50% and then we're just going to feather the edge on the right hand side there just to blend that a little bit better. Check the opacity. There you go, I really hope you've enjoyed this. A really quick and fast way for you to use the Mystical Lights plugin within Affinity Photo. I've gone back to Optical 4, I think that works fabulously with this picture, hope you do too. Please don't forget to subscribe and also hit the like button and if you want to hear more of these ahead of everyone else then don't forget to also just hit that bell and you'll get a notification the next time I upload. Many thanks.